Hey everybody, Barry here again. I am in work mode this morning. There's this pretty serious snowstorm coming and I still haven't cut the frame off where I need the front bumper mounts for the Escalade. That being these mounts right here that bolt onto the front or that weld onto the front, I should say. And that's where the Escalade bumper bolts on. So I gotta go outside and cut those off. I got my corded, cordless, battery powered saws out here. I'm gonna run out and slice that off now. There's almost too much snow to get at it right now. Well, there would have been if I waited a little bit. So here's the Escalade front bumper mounts. They are different than a regular Silverado because the Escalade bolts on back here, further back the frame rail, and a Silverado bumper bolts on right in front of the frame rail right here. Yeah, I probably could have just made up an angle bracket to do that, but I'd rather have it look factory. Man, I gotta say, this little sawzall is amazing. It's supposed to be an 18 volt, but the battery was cooked and these Mastercraft batteries, the old ones aren't available anymore. So Dwayne and I put a set of leads on it, hook it up to a 12 volt battery. It's not as fast, but I just did all that with one sawzall blade. And with a regular 18 volt or 20 volt or whatever, I probably would have went through six now because they're so fast, they just burn the blades up really quick. I just got to clean up my garbage here and pick up a couple blades that I have and get this stuff into the shop. And then I suppose I probably should go and weld those on. As far as I know, I'm getting down to the bitter end of fabrication. I've got to weld on these two bumper mounts and then I've got to watch my footstep because it's really bumpy here. <laughs> and then uh, uh, set my pinion height on the rear diff and weld the perches onto that and I think that's it I do have some body work to do but uh, I'm not really looking forward to that but if I could buy new fenders it'd be sweet they're like 500 bucks each so I'm not going to do that now that I have my pieces inside and not out in a snowbank, I can start to putting them back on the truck so I'm just gonna run the grinder around here. I might have to fire a plasma cutter because this right here is a pretty freaky angle. And to center it up, uh, maybe I'll take a few measurements just to be sure, but what will I do? I think what I'll do is just run it right behind the weld. Like maybe I'll run the plasma cutter right behind this weld here leave just like an eighth of an inch of meat so that I can just line it right up with that frame, buzz it on. And this bolt hole will only be like an eighth of an inch forward. And we can see, I think it's right here because the bumper's upside down. This hole is bigger and it's slotted for left to right for alignment anyway. So if my bolt hole, if my bumper sits too far ahead, which it won't, then I can just grab a reamer or a bigger drill bit, buzz the hole a little bit bigger, and then I can just kind of adjust it like I need to. If the bumper sits too low or too high, that's a little bit bigger of a pain. Low is fine, stack of washer, high, not so good. So I think that's the best way for me to do that. I'm on my lunch break and I want to take advantage of the full hour, so you're going on time lapse.
Well, I have the extra frame brackets cut off of these here that I need. Plasma cutter is amazing for this stuff. It can get into some pretty tight spots. You can see my edges are pretty rough, so I'm just going to run over that with the flat wheel or grinder wheel or something like that just to calm it down, clean it up, make sure that it's going to go on square. This bumper is very forgiving. The bracket is very forgiving. It doesn't even matter really if it's like this a little bit or like that, but I just want to make sure that it goes on nice and flush. And I'm just going to clean it up a little bit. I went ahead and cleaned up the frame. Just got to clean up enough that I can go and weld it and even it up. That looks good. This is all cleaned up, ready for welding. And I had to look back at my video to see which way these went, whether it was inward or outward. And it goes like this, inward. Huh, I got a half decent seam there to weld to. Jeez, that's not bad at all. Well, it looks to me like we got bumper mounts. Woohoo! That's so cool. I, you know, leveled them up, straightened them up the best I could and X, Y, and Z plane. I'm really happy now that I can just lay the bumper in place and bolt it on. That's super cool. I think I'm going to paint it. I think I'll paint it right now. Much gooder. Well, I kind of got ahead of myself for a minute there. I was like, well, let's see how the bumper fits. And it does. It's perfect. We can get an idea of how low the truck is going to be. It's not extremely low by any means. But the bottom of the bumper is below the hub. That's pretty cool. Now you can see that it's not level with the floor. And I don't have any of the braces in this thing. Everything is floppy and flexible. Plus the bumper is like destroyed. So, you know, I'm working with what I got here. 
anyway, I'm going to go put the doors on really quick. Well, now that that's fixed, I can work on something else. That's the back end this time. Might as well finish up my last fab job, considering I brought it up earlier in this video. Ooh, not last. One of the last. I still got to put links on that. But that's actually not a bad thing to do either. I need to set my pinion angle. So I got the wheels off because I'm going to put brakes on it later on. But I don't have the pinion angle set. So right now it's not actually welded to the spring perch at all and what I'm gonna do is just measure the angle of the yoke up there and then set the opposite angle of the yoke back here and then that's it and I got my drive shaft here I'm pretty sure this is the right drive shaft if this is one off the escalate it's gonna be too short but I think it's the one off the single cab short bed we'll see in a second I can't even begin to explain how excited I am to have all-wheel drive it's still a concept to me that's like, wow. I just, I don't know, I can't explain it. Are you gonna leak? Uh, the yoke looks to be the same size. This one here is actually a little bit longer. So I may end up having to change the yoke, I'm not quite sure. If it's too long, oh wow, it goes all the way. Well, there goes my cap and all my needles. <laughs> you probably could have used a U-joint anyway. Wow, it is bottomed out. Completely bottomed out. Hmm. I very much doubt I'm going to have enough slip yoke to make this work. Very much doubt that. Oh, the U-joint is pretty much seized anyway. If I can get three quarters of an inch of slip yoke, it'll be tight, but it'll be good. Well, I don't know if this drive shaft's gonna do it. I've got, oh, geez, actually, I've got about a half inch. Not great. I prefer not to break the tail shaft housing. Um, oh, oops. Although I wonder if I could do a quick measurement and see if that other slip yoke would go in further. There's like spider webs or something hanging on me that's freaking me out. So I'm wondering if, let's get this on an angle where we can all see. I'm wondering if the other slip yoke may go in a little bit further because where it's longer, it might be bottoming out back here further. So I'm just gonna push it all the way ahead. So now it's all the way ahead. It looks like it bottoms out on the seal right here, which even that's not a huge deal actually. If that compresses it in a quarter inch, it's, it's just fine. I'm just gonna put my caliper right here on the edge of this yoke and go all the way in Oops. until I touch right there. I know it's not centered, but the distance doesn't matter. The difference in distance matters here. So here we have 93.85 millimeters. Now we will do the same thing right here. Oh boy. It's not gonna be so easy to measure, but a little bit of math. Oh yeah, get it right on the edge. Fifty two point oh eight. Twenty three point eight one. And for the more difficult, oh, let's see if I can get a half even representation here. Okay, 
is not perfect. 15.35. Let me go do some math. I just did the math and it's 91.24. So we take away our 93.85. Minus 93.85 and we're left with two and a half millimeters. That's good. Two and a half millimeters closer. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but well, it can be. Two and a half millimeters is almost a tenth of an inch. My next test will be to compress the suspension way up to the frame. I need to do that anyway to set my ride height so I can set the pinion angle, but also I'll be able to see if the pinion gets closer or further away from the transfer case. I've got like two inches of travel. It's not gonna get any closer than it is. One thing that I didn't factor in that I need to right now is pinion angle, which obviously I talked about, and how it's gonna affect the yoke, uh, the slip yoke distance. So we've got quite a bit of slip yoke. After I compressed it up, I'm not even up all the way and it actually got further away. So that's fine. Now I need to check my angle, my downward angle here and match it with my upward angle. But if I go up, the way this carrier is gonna rotate, it's gonna sort of push it closer to the transfer case, if I'm looking at it correctly. But there's only one way to figure it out. Well, I'm back, and I didn't actually do anything because I think it's pretty much right where it needs to be. The transfer case is at four degree downward angle. The rear diff is at a three degree upward angle. So if they were exactly even, it would be four degrees down, four degrees up. But because I'm using leaf springs, there is gonna be some axle wrap, at least until I get traction bars or Caltrax or something on this thing, because I have a feeling I'm gonna need them. So I'm gonna set it down one more degree, just to get two degrees down, because when the leaf springs warp, they get into an S shape and the pinion wants to rise because the pinion wants to climb the carrier gear or the big ring gear. So I would rather it be two degrees down and then come up to zero difference under load than to be even and then two degrees up and the U-joints be out of phase. If you get me, you've probably dealt with this before. So I'm just gonna give the pinion a little tappy tap down and then weld it. Yeah, we're getting close now. And for anybody who's wondering, I'm just using a little level app on my phone. Yeah, I know. Well, the only thing left to do now is weld the perches to the diff. It's all right, I don't need any longer blocks. Or this thing would run at a U-bolt. All welded up. Woohoo! Flux core to the rescue. I need to put links on this thing. I'm hoping to get some 90 degree and 90 degree or something like that. Like a, like even the ones that have just two bushings. You go here and here, put a bolt in through, bolt in through here, and then it'll just be like a very simple sway bar link. No extra craziness, no nothing. I was just talking to Joey. He said he has a a jounce bumper that is just a bolt and like one puck so it sits like right here rather than hitting the jounce bumper as soon as i drive it so i think i might get that off him and just bolt it on here that way i'll gain like probably four inches of suspension travel before it bottoms out i probably should put bolts up there too actually while i'm here <laughs> I want to make sure, though, that I don't need to take the bed off to get at the fuel pump and stuff, because it would be kind of cool not to have to mess with that again. Well, while I'm in fabrication mode, might as well put the rear links on. These are Escalade links, TWK 6700. 
That was the fastest unboxing I've ever done. Look, same early. It's got a hole on one end and then a 90 degree stud on the other end. You'll have to excuse the noise outside because it is winter in Newfoundland, meaning there was a blizzard happening right now. And the wind just howls in everywhere. So if this is as simple as I hope it's gonna be. Oh, wow. It's pretty close. Huh. Jeez, it's not bad at all. What I did was went ahead and just laid the rear end on jack stands like this so that the suspension is fully collapsed. Where the truck is so low, I wouldn't want to have my link down here too close and end up smacking it off the spring, which I don't actually think would be an issue because it seems like it's very close, but not too bad. So what I'm going to do is put my link there and just sort of have it say as high as I can. I don't, I don't really need it to go up that high, but if I could get it even like right here somewhere. I thought about putting a bend in the link, like in the middle here somewhere, so that it would be on the right angle to sit flat up against the frame. I think I might try that. I guess if I ruin it, I can just send it back. It won't really matter that this one sits, like it won't be that bad, but it wouldn't matter if it sat off on an angle like this a little bit because it's made to pivot and swing anyway. Just for the sake of trying to make them even, I think what I'm gonna do is nip this one in the vise so that the head is touching right here. That way I know the bend is gonna be there on the other one too. I don't know if it really matters if they're even or not, but I want them to be even. I think where it's gonna to wanna to bend is right here at this weld. So I think maybe I'll put something in here and sort of push it that way. So hopefully it'll start to bend there. I don't have any heat, so that's not an option. So let's see if I can break a weld or something. If I do, I'll just weld it back on. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Well, I just found out that a 3 8 extension fits in there like a glove. So that'll give me a little more leverage. This bushing is kind of loose looking, isn't it? Oh boy. Vice and all on the move. Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to try something else. Let's see if we can get some side leverage on this thing. I think this makes way more sense. So as long as I pry it straight, it should bend straight. Oh, there we go. We're getting some bend. I don't know if that's too much or not, but we'll see. All right, let's see if I got a good enough camera angle to be able to see it here or not. Oh, wow. Dude, that actually worked perfect. <laughs> that's great. Wow. Look at that. I might have bent it just a touch too far, but I can straighten that out. That's not a big deal. But that's going to allow me to just put a bolt through it and probably put like a bit of a heavy plate on the backside or something. And yeah, man, look at that. And I can put my bar vertical or I can bring it off a little bit right here because I think there's like a plate. Oh no, there's no plate on the back. So I can just drill my hole and bolt it on, man. It's going to make a big difference in ride. Look at this, <laughs> that worked perfect. I actually turned the link around backwards. I found that it works on the exact same angle, so why not? It'll never touch the frame because this is a fixed point, but the head of the link would touch the springs because this is not a fixed point. So now I've got lots of room. Like I can fit my finger between the bolt and the spring here. So that's, uh, I really like the look of that. That's super cool, man. That is really, really cool. 
So I'm just gonna through bolt it, but I think what I'll do is maybe grind off a section here. And right here, I've got some old quarter or 3 16th, I think it's quarter plate. And what I'll do is grab my hole saw, like say this one, for instance, now it'll be bigger than this one, hole saw a piece out, drill out the center bigger so it'll bolt to fit through it. And then I've got a quarter inch thick uh, mount or brace or whatever that all weld to the frame. And that way the frame will be nice and thick so that it doesn't crack or anything from the stress of the sway bar. I got one washer almost drilled out and that battery died. Then that battery died. And now that battery's dead. I wanted to hog this out by hand. I don't think an impact bit driver is the right tool for this job, but it's gonna be the tool for this job. Well, I'm going to give that thing a break because I would say it's probably ready to throw up and let the batteries charge up. I wonder where my piece went. Hmm. Oh, there it is. I imagine that's fairly hot. I'm going to grind that down and then go clean up the frame and I'll weld one piece on, drill the hole through it, mount the link, and then that'll give me half an hour, an hour or so to let those batteries charge up. And then I'll be able to do the second side. It's really hard to get any good video here because it's so dark. But I got it welded. I only welded two sides. I really don't see the point in welding it the whole way around when it's gonna be bolted and clamped anyway. So uh, yeah, it's uh, I probably could have welded it top and bottom instead of the sides, but again, whatever, it's gonna be just fine. I'm gonna go and drill a hole here. It's just below a half inch so i'm just gonna well uh, i'm just gonna drill a half inch hole and then bolt it on so it fits just fine right there this is with the suspension in full suspension so that's the lowest that it's ever going to get that's the most upward angle that it's ever going to get so i know that it's going to be on a downward angle when it gets up the other way or relatively flat I didn't want to go too high on the frame. I'd like to have a nice little gap between the top of the uh, link and the frame just to make sure, you know, make it look good. And I'm not going to put any extra strain on this joint up here or that curve or whatever. Well, uh, might as well go bolt it on. Well, I looked through my bolt bin and I found some bolts that are quite snug. And I'm just gonna put a washer on there for good measure. There we go. Actually, you know, I think I'd like to 
look at this better with the nut on the inside. Let's try it this way. Oh yeah, that's way clear. There we go. Now have the sway bar link. Now I just gotta copy it on the other side. Hey, we're all done. That one fit just as good as the other side. I really like the way that bracket looks too, that piece that's gonna stiffen the frame up real nice. The tension from the bolt is not gonna wanna allow it to do this anyway, but now it's completely eliminated by having that big, nice chunk of metal there. I probably could have made it bigger, but I really don't see the point. It's not gonna have that much load on it. Lots of clearance to the frame. Like I said, it's never ever gonna get closer than this because it can't, it's secured here. <laughs> All it's gonna do is swing sort of like this. So that, man, that looks really good. I'm so glad to have that done. I'm gonna go bolt the wheels on, sit it on the ground and see how it looks from it under. Well, I got her on the ground and, geez man, the link is just about perfectly vertical, eh? That's great. What a nice look. One thing that I noticed when I was laying on the ground, when the weight came on the suspension and it started to settle, I could hear a from that bushing kind of freaking out there. And that's because I tightened the bolt up when the rod was like this, and now the rod has turned and it's vertical. And right now there's load on that bushing. So that's going to motivate the rubber to tear away from the steel bushing in the center and it'll wear the link out quickly. So what I'm going to do is just loosen it so the load comes off and then tighten the bolt back up again. But I'm just going to do that off camera because, I mean, it's just loosening and tightening a bolt. No big deal. So I am all done for today. This is some fabrication work. I haven't done that in a little while. It's been quite a few videos now since I actually picked up the welder or the grinder or anything. It's been mostly electrical and interior and all that engine stuff. So it's been nice to actually pick up some, some making tools instead of just putting pieces together. So I'm all done for today. Thanks for checking out the channel. Thanks for YouTube members, patrons, and subscribers. If you wanna check out my Patreon, it's patreon.com slash station road rat rods. My YouTube members link is down here. And thanks for watching. Have a great day, everybody.